Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back again tonight with another pinball repair video for you. This is a really cool game that we've had a long time that we're finally going to fix up, get in nice shape, and then film a video of us playing it. This is Gottlieb's 1969 Lariat Pinball. It's the exact same as Wild Wild West, Gottlieb's Wild Wild West Pinball, except this is the rare add a ball version of it so if you don't know what that is i'll explain it to you here in a minute but um this is a really cool game we bought this off of a guy many years ago and is in pretty rough shape uh we had the cabinet repainted parts of it are pretty nice parts of it aren't perfect but <laughs> we had the cabinet repainted the uh the uh legs have been repainted the back glass i have at the house i need to bring back up and the play field's pretty rough but uh, we're going to fix this up. This is a this is a real uh, piece of work here. Whenever people talk about rare machines, this is a really rare machine. Now, have you ever heard me say any of our games are rare? I never use that word. This really is rare, and it's because it's an add a ball game. So, way back in the day, they had all of these legal uh, problems with people playing pinball machines. And the reason was because people gambled on them. So they, they had uh, what they called bingo machines that had, you know, 25 holes in them. And you where the ball lands, it lights up numbers. And you could actually win a bunch of credits on the game and then uh, get paid out for it. So on those games, if, if the game was like a nickel to play, you might win 100 credits. So you might win, you might, you might have $5 worth of credits on it. You tell the owner of the stab the establishment he comes over, he hits a button on it that knocks all the credits off, a, a knockoff button, and pays you five dollars. So you could actually gamble on the uh, bingo games. Well, because of that, a lot of uh, municipalities, states, and things made pinball illegal, if you can believe that. So a lot of the companies uh, came up had to come up with different ways to to prove that you could not gamble on the machines. So they did, uh, I don't know if the Gottlieb one has anything on it. Here, this is a Williams game from the 70s. See how it says, for amusement only? They had to put stuff like that on the machine. So one of the one of the things that, uh, you know, I, if you look into the history of it, and I've talked about it before, um, the flipper was actually designed for that. When you put a flipper on a machine, now it's more of a game of skill, and you don't, um, it's less of a game of gambling. But that wasn't enough for some places. So some places said, believe it or not, if you can win a free game on the pinball machine, that's gambling because you could sell your free game. <laughs> so let's say I'm playing this. I win a free game. I turn around to the guy behind me and I say, hey, buddy, I got this game over here that's worth a quarter. Give me a dime and it's yours. That's gambling. So I'm basically winning something of value, even though the value is only a quarter or a dime or a nickel. So as preposterous as that sounds, that's how some of the laws in some of the places were. So Gottlieb comes up with a brilliant idea. So in most games, like the, there is, a, there is another version of this game that's almost identical to it. It's a little bit different. A little bit of the play field's different. The back glass is different, which you can't see yet because we haven't brought in. Um... And the gameplay is a little bit different, but the Wild Wild West game is a uh, is just a you know a standard a standard machine. On that game, you get either three balls or five balls, depending on how it's set up. And so when you start the the game on the back, it says ball number one, and you play through it, right? And then uh, when you uh, I'm wondering if one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I guess that makes sense. So you, on 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 Wild 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 West, you start with ball number one, then you play ball number two, then you play ball number three, and then it says game over. Well, on an add a ball game, and so you can you can win a free game on that. On an add a ball game, A D D dash A dash B A L L. On an add a ball game, uh, that was a Gottlieb kind of trademark. I don't think they let anybody else use that that phrase. You started off with five balls, and so it said five on the back glass. And the, they made the rules slightly different. So in this particular game, you cannot win a free game. 
you can, if you notice there's no score there's no credit reel in the back box you can't even put more than one credit on the game well i guess you can because it's two player but you get my point um but the uh the 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 rules are a little bit different on this game on the wild wild western game these inserts here say two thousand points and then the lights say when lit or it might be 500 points when lit whatever it says these little inserts say when lit on this game it says one two three four five so if you score all five of those you win a free ball so on a regular electromechanical pinball machine they didn't have a way to actually go backwards on the uh, ball count so if you were on ball number two and you win a free ball on an EM what does it do you don't go back to ball number one it stays on ball number two and it lights a light up at the bottom that says same player shoots again when lit right here's an eight ball which is actually a solid state same player shoots again so it just gives you a uh, it gives you another ball so let's see Bally's Lost World I don't know if uh, I think on Lost World it lights up on the back glass if you can I think you can shoot a get a free get free ball on a lost world same player shoots again we've even got this bad cats here and it says meow again so that's how they do it on most games whenever your ball ends it just doesn't take it away from you it shoots the ball back out and you play again but on an add a ball game whenever you get all five of those lights on the back glass you're at, you've got five balls left it says ball five it goes up to six right and then you keep you can keep playing you got the same ball so you do it again it goes up to seven <laughs> so it, it's actually designed where you can add a ball to the total number of balls that you have left to play so instead of playing the balls up you're actually playing them down so the number on the back tells you how many you have left so the theory behind that was you can't sell an extra ball to the guy behind you i guess you could turn around and say hey give me a quarter and i'll let you play my game but that was just a way that they were trying to skirt um, the legalities of the games where you could win credits. They also had games. Uh, some of the some of the places uh, like a, of the Bally's. Yeah, let's look at this. So this is an old eight ball. It's beat all the heck, but we haven't done it yet. Look real close on the window where it says credit. That's actually like a little sticker. And the reason for that was in some locations. It was against the law to let people know that there were extra games on the machine. So they did all kinds of little crazy stuff like this. So if you won three or four games, as long as it didn't say that you had four games on the machine, you were fine. It wasn't illegal. But if it said four on it, you might be able to sell them or whatever. You know. So they actually made the back glasses where you could put a little sticker that says credit if you're in a place where that's legal or leave it off and you can actually on a bally you can turn off uh, where it displays how many credits you have that's also where this little light comes from on the apron there's a little light here that lights up if there's a credit on the machine so like i said it's just ridiculous laws but that was the birth of the add a ball machine so because these add a ball machines were basically made for places where the regular machine was illegal, they never made as many of them. So Wild Wild West, um, I should have looked up how many of those they made. I'm just going to guess two or 3,000 Wild Wild West. But this Lariat, which is a different name, it's basically the same game, but it's the add a ball version. And uh, has slightly different uh, scoring, uh, slightly different instructions, couple little changes in the art, changes in the art on the back glass. Lariat, they only made 150 of these. So that's pretty rare. You know, how many of those are still around? Maybe 50. So we had a guy call us years ago, and he, uh, he had a bunch of games. We went and bought them, and he had three Lariats. So out of the 150, we've got three of them. How cool is that?
but this was the worst one this thing was in really rough shape when we got it so but we're going through fixing it up the paint is kind of done some of the paint um, but it's been sitting like this for years so it's time to fix it our, our main problem is going to be the top of the play field looks like crap I'll take the glass off and we'll mess with it but that's all flaking off it kind of it was originally pink and it kind of looks like there's like a like a wax that's you know it's dust but there's like a wax that's rubbing off of it so we're gonna have to very carefully look at that we're gonna have to very carefully try to clean that off and get that all presentable if I can get it all a uniform pink color will be about done with that <laughs> that's gonna be the hard part so uh, I'll do this let me take the glass out we'll open it up let's look inside of it and see what we're starting with. the thing is rough there's a lot of rust on the uh, on the uh, apron here we'll have to decide what we want to do with that uh, the play field has just problems everywhere stuff like this really scares me look at the woman's legs i don't know if all that's going to just stay like it is or if it's all going to go white or if i'm looking at primer under it or what i don't know what's going on there you've got the same thing going on here it looks like a lot of that's going to chip off back here in the back you've got all these different shades of pink and this looks like it's either the clear coat or it's like a wax that's kind of flaking off See there? So people, that's really scaring me. <laughs> I hope we don't end up ruining this, this play field, but we're gonna see what we can do. Hopefully we won't have to repaint the whole thing. That would be a disaster. We've got our plastics. Everything looks good on them. Um, it's just mainly or how much of this paint are we going to be able to save it's such a look how great the design is i mean look how awesome that looks you got these two super cool cowgirls here right in the middle just awesome art and uh so we really need to save that and make it look as good as possible so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start taking everything off of the play field and uh We'll get it down as bare as we can. I'm uh, probably not take the pop bumpers off yet, but I may have to later. Um, but I'll certainly take all the plastics and posts off until we get down to the bare wood and see what we end up with. Okay, we got everything off of it. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens with this. Got the arch off of it. Oh, I guess I need to take these off too. Let's take these off real quick. All right, that's better. Got those out of the way. Um, yeah, this is pretty amazing. If you look, you can see what, what's happened. This, this machine's from the 60s, and originally it was basically hot pink underneath the uh, the dead bumpers at the top it's still hot pink and it is completely faded to like a white pink which is a good color if we can get it all one color that would be much more preferable her her skirt was probably and her boots were probably the same hot pink color originally pretty wild <laughs> So we're going to save this one way or the other. You know, when I, when we got these, we had uh, three of them. We've got three of them. Whenever we got these, this one that was in the worst condition. And whenever we got these, um, I I tried to purchase a replacement playfield to replace this particular playfield because the other two are in better shape. And so I thought, well, I'll just get a Wild Wild West playfield. That's a pretty common game. And I found one, a gentleman online actually had a Wild Wild West playfield that was in decent shape. And uh, he got it all ready to go and everything. And then at the last minute, I noticed 
that the play field is it's just there's a lot of differences just little stuff like i i think uh some of this stuff is different and uh like i was saying the one two three four five is different so the all of the scoring is marked differently on the wild wild west play field and the lariat play field so since there were only 150 of them folks this is it i'm gonna have to fix it somehow so what i'm first going to do is very carefully try to clean all of the nastiness off of it just the regular dirt and i'm going to go real careful in certain places because like i said what is going on there i don't know if i mean it, it would be great if i could get all of this brown to turn white like that because that's probably the original color but it sure looks to me like you know a layer of paint is flaking off there so i'm going to go very careful and this is always fun whenever you have a melted piece of rubber on the play field. That always takes the paint off. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to wipe it down very carefully and uh, go little by little by little by little and see uh, how well I can clean it up just with some uh, like 409 and elbow grease. But not too much elbow grease because I don't want everything to flake off. If I can get all of this crap to flake off and leave it all one pretty pink color, we're good. We're done. <laughs> I could roll with it. I could even leave that as it is if it would stay like that, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think I'm going to have to. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go pretty severe on it. But let's let's see what we can do. So I cleaned off a lot of the loose stuff and uh, even vacuumed off some of the loose stuff, and then I took some magic eraser and started working on the bottom here. Um, basically, the pink paint everywhere that it is which is her skirt her boots and the whole top half <laughs> is all um i think the paint's just compromised like the top layer of the paint it's just flaking off so this is as much of it as i could get off and so when you hit it with a magic eraser it 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 really darkens the pink like that you know so it's a lot darker than it was this is the color that it was and then this is what it is after you clean it. But if you go too far, uh, you don't get rid of the top. You get like what's going on up here. So you get it nice and pink. You know, it was that. You get it nice and pink, but you've still got all of this top layer, almost like dead skin cells that's stuck on it and if you keep going you start losing some of your pink so you can see where the white's starting to come through over here even more right so no matter what you do you can't get rid of all of this loose stuff which means i'm just gonna have to do the best i can with it and then i'm probably gonna have to repaint the pink so that's fun So we'll see how that goes. I kind of hate to do it because I don't like this down here. I want to leave like with the the speckled where it's you know chipped a little bit there. This little bit of wear I don't mind at all. So if the whole thing could look weathered like that, it'd be fine. But now I'm going to have pink up here that's new, and then there, all of this is old. So we're just going to have to do what we can do. I'll, I'm going to clean this up the best I can, but I don't think there's any way I can get it where it even, like that right there is about as good as I can get it for that part. I mean, you can't leave it like that. But I'll keep cleaning with Magic Eraser. We'll see how clean we can get it, and then we'll see what we can do. Okay, so I mixed up some pink. I started painting in some pink. It's kind of a pinkish purple, but I think it's a pretty decent match. Basically, I'm trying to leave her skirt alone and repaint all this to match the skirt. That's not the original color that it was, but it's more of a faded look, you know? But I want to leave these. I don't want to redo these. Um, and we'll redo all of this. But I think it's coming along pretty good. So as you can see, I've already done all this part. I cleaned it all off as good as I could, got all of the loose paint off and everything. And now we're putting it in. I'm going to try to make it, I'm, I'm going to try to, I mean, I may not even touch up the yellow because I want it to look worn because all of this looks worn, you know, so I kind of want it all to look, um, to all look evenly worn, but that pink was just freaking ridiculous. I mean, 
we couldn't have left it like that. So, so I'm going to keep putting that in, and uh, we'll see if we can. I don't. I may be able to leave this too, like in the, the parts in the mountains. Some of that blue needs to be redone, though. But, um. Hmm. So I'll just keep paint. I'll, I'll paint down to the mountains, and then we'll see how it looks after that. Okay, so I did all of the pink. I think it turned out pretty good, really. I think that kind of saved it. Because that was the only part that was just completely unacceptable. The rest of it still looks pretty good. Um, now, there's a lot of wear right there. A lot of this blue is missing. So I'm going to do some blue, too. And it'll allow me to touch up some of the blue on up there where there's some wear. Um... So I'm thinking I'm going to touch up this blue. I'm going to 
I'll touch up a little bit of the blue up here if I can get a real good match. And then I'm going to try to make this look a little better. And then we're going to leave it alone. I might re, re uh, do some of the black lines. I also use the pink to redo the uh, numbers on the inserts. Okay, so I got a mix of blue, and it's all the same color. Um, it's all the same, so I'm just going to try to mix a blue. Well, see, there's not really that many colors on this, is there? There's red and yellow. There's a cream. Um, there's a pink. And there's a blue. So I, th I guess there's five colors. Uh, another six colors because this is this is um like this color here is different than that color. See the contrast between the so there's white, but it's not too not too complex. So I will. Uh, I'll see if I can mix up a blue that's pretty close so we can get some of that back in. That's supposed to be like mountains where you're looking up a canyon or something. Or there's, I guess they're out hee-hawing it. <laughs> and the uh, the desert stretches off and in the background you see the, the mountains. Um, but that's, that's pretty worn right there. This right here, like this yellow worn, I'm going to leave that, I think. Because... Uh, I can't make it all look perfect. There's just there's problems everywhere, but I, that's pretty bad. And I think I think if I do that, since it's isolated from everything else, it'll be pretty easy to touch up. So wish me luck. So the mountains are starting to come back in. You can see how we got it like kind of half and half. It's really kind of cool the way they designed that. So of course we had to finish the left side a little bit and touch up the right side a little bit, but. We're about there, people. About got it. Now, after that, I need to re-ink some of the black lines here and there. But, um, and I'm do that. But, uh, we're definitely getting there. So, just a little bit more blue paint, and then we'll do the black. All right, so this is what we ended up with. I sprayed clear coat on it. And... Yes, I sprayed clear coat with the very target still installed. They move. Well, I don't want to move them because then they stick back. But Check that out. Man, I really think it came out pretty damn good, really. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought this thing was going to be rough. And I wanted it to be decent because we uh, repainted the cabinet and everything, you know. So I wanted it to look pretty good. And I think it's going to. It's just coming together pretty good. The secret is, people... Don't use glossy clear coat. If you use glossy clear coat, you can see every little thing, but it doesn't, uh, on the older games, they, they weren't high gloss. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a lot better than I thought. So, we'll let this dry, and then we'll wax it, and then we'll uh, start putting stuff back on it. I had to order a bunch of parts. So when they come in, we will... Uh, We'll put it all back together and make it look good. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Definitely. For show. I looked at a bunch of pictures uh, online of the, some of them floating around. And uh, Wild Wild West, too, because it's the same art or close to the same art. And uh, all of them, the pink's faded. So I think... I think uh, it's going to look pretty good once we get all the pop bumpers back on it and all the lights on, put the arch back on the top. We have to paint that arch. We have to repaint the apron and all of that. But yeah, I'm really happy with how the touch-ups came out. I think it looks a lot better than I thought it would. So here's what we ended up with after we cleaned and put everything back. So... We waxed, waxed, waxed. You can see the, sh the sheen from the lights on it a little bit. See how the wax came out. Looking pretty uniform and good. 
even up here on the top. Um, I've got new flipper plastics on it. Those are actually new old stock. I've had those for a long time. Um, of course, new rubbers, new light bulbs everywhere. New, I mean, these are original but cleaned. Cleaned, cleaned, cleaned. New pop bumper caps. Cleaned. Those are actually the original uh, lane guides. Even though a couple of them are darker than the other ones, I kind of just liked how they were vintage and hadn't cracked or anything yet, so I cleaned them up as best I could and put them back. They're real cheap though, they're only like a dollar if you have to buy new ones. Um, so yeah, I think it's looking really good. So we need to get our metal back on, so the arch at the top needed to be repainted. The apron at the bottom needs to be repainted. The shooter gauge, I think that's called, needs to be repainted. But I think repopulated, it looks pretty good. Oh yeah, you can see the you can see the sheen there pretty good. You don't want it real glossy like in modern pinball machine because that's not how they look. They kind of look like that. So we got it as clean as possible. There's a little bit of wear here from the kick out hole. A little bit of wear here from the kick out hole. Just whenever the ball kicks out it lands right there and causes a little bit of damage but it's got some clear coat on it now. It's got wax on it so it won't get any worse. And that center pop bumper lights up too. There's a uh, there's a relay that goes back and forth, and so either those are lit up or that one's lit up. That's how it works. I think it's a much a, a big improvement over how it was originally, and I kind of like the little bit of wear that's around the pop bumpers because it's just enough. I know a lot of people like them perfect, but I like it where it looks a little worn, and it kind of hides that we redid all this. You know, I, I like it. I think we we struck a good medium there. So we'll do the let's do the apron and get that all on there. So the next thing we're going to do we're going to fix this apron. The thing's just destroyed. It's got surface rust all over it. All the paint and the art has uh, gotten messed up. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit and then I'm going to start sanding it and uh, we're going to repaint the whole thing. So uh, we'll get started on that. And see how good we can make it look. So we sanded it down, got rid of all the rust that we could, and then cleared it. I mean, I sprayed it a nice white. You can see on this, it's not quite thick enough to hide everything, but that shouldn't matter for what we're doing. But it looks nice and clean now. And so we ordered these a while back, because we've had these games for a while, from Pinball Rescue. So Pinball Rescue is in Australia. Pinballrescue.net and they make some stuff that you can't get other places which is why you have to order it from Australia. So it says instructions for fitting pinball rescue decals. Prepare the ball cover by repainting it in the original color. A high gloss finish is preferable. Check. Check the position where the decals are to be applied. You can mark the position using plastic tape. Nah. Three, wet surface with water. Oh, I skipped one. Ensure surface is clean and free of dust, polish, or oils. Three, wet surface with water. Use a small amount of detergent, about the same strength you would use to wash dishes. So in other words, use Windex. This will enable you to position the decal and assist in removing air bubbles from underneath the decal. Four, place decal face down on a flat surface and remove backing sheet, being careful not to soil the adhesive on the decal. Apply decal to wet surface and adjust into position. Squeezy, squeegee gently with the squeegee and slowly to remove any excess water and air bubbles from beneath the decal. Lay a piece of paper on top of the decal while you squeegee. This prevents scratching and the edges lifting. Allow several hours to dry overnight is preferable. Note: In some climates, fogging of the adhesive will occur. This will dissipate after a few days in warm conditions. Alright, so basically we're going to get this real wet, then we're going to carefully put the decal on it, 
and slide it to where it goes and then we're going to squeegee out all of the uh, all of the air but what i'm going to do is this ball shooter cover first because i've got two of those so if i mess one up i can use the other one so we'll do it first and see how it comes out so here is what it ended up looking like with the decal on the uh, apron. It's still not dry all the way, but it was dry enough to put on there. That's the only way to fly, people. There's no way you can repaint that. Sometimes if we've got one where like a little bit of it's missing, we'll repaint in the part that's missing. But man, you need to put those decals on it. It just makes it look nice and clean. Um, and then the... Uh, the arch up at the top we had to repaint too. Usually I don't even do that unless unless uh, it's just all rusted and you, you don't have any choice. So I didn't have a choice in this instance, so I went with it. But there you go. So we have got the play field done. So now what I've got to do is I need to film another video of us fixing all the electronic stuff. We've already started filming it, but we'll edit it together so that there's a separate video of electronics. Um, of course, we still have to do the back glass and uh, the cabinet a little bit but the electronic stuff we'll do on a separate video so uh, we'll end this here it's getting pretty uh, pretty long anyway but leave your comments below about how you think the play field turned out I think it looks really good um, make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it all for you because we didn't have to do that folks it slows us down a little bit you know but we do it anyways because we want to keep our viewers uh, with fresh material, right? So leave your comments below, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't already, and we will see you on the next video. So the next video will be doing all the electronic repair on it. We'll check some of that stuff out.